Hello heroes and villains, welcome to Multiverse. So we are going to continue with our Deathstroke Determinator character, but today we are going to set up our base with our character. I had, I had a few questions about that uh, lately. Some people have been asking how do you set up your base and all that. So if you've been wondering how to set up your base and how to decorate your base, stick around. We're going to take a look at that right now. So let's complete the mission. Home is where your base is. So you can see it's a level 9 mission. Uh, eons ago it, we would get this mission around level 14 15 i think but uh, it seems to be uh, nowadays once we reach level 9 we seem to be getting this mission so let's complete the mission so as you saw it gave us our first two layers it gave us the gothic layer and it gave us the deco layer so let's consume that yep there you go now that you have a theme for your base you need to get a deed these are used to actually grant base ownership and to select a location for the entrance. So as, calcul as calculator said, we need a deed for our base. So we are going to get a deed here. You can see the deed right there. So let's complete the mission homestead. So it says a hideout, establish your own hideout, which you can theme and decorate to best fit your style. Got it. So let us go to our inventory and then we will see our deeds. So you can see the deed here requires level 8. And right now we have access to do two base styles. But if you're like me and if you purchased a whole bunch of stuff on the marketplace. So you can see I purchased a whole bunch of stuff on the marketplace. But one of the things that I did purchase, well a few of the things that I did purchase were related to our lair. So here you can see I have the Eastern layer, so let's get that. The Sewer layer. The Penthouse layer. So basically I purchased every layer that there is on the marketplace. And now that I've reached level 9, I should be able to use at least some of those layers if I want to. And also I'm going to get my amenities. So you can see the mailbox, the bank, the broker. The R&D station, respect station, teleporter. So all these are things that I purchased from the marketplace eons ago. And now I can redeem those things with every single... Oh, didn't mean to get that. Now I can redeem those uh, those items, those things with every single characters on my account. So we can see the Brainiac layer. The Atlantean layer. So now that I've redeemed all of that, let's consume them. If you want to see all those layers, I made videos with uh, each and every one of those layers. And even the amenities. Uh, I showed how you can get those amenities for free. But if, uh, if you can afford to and you don't mind, you can just purchase them from the marketplace if you prefer. And if you do get the free one and you do purchase the one from the marketplace, then you can have two of each amenities in your lair. That's why in some of my base, sometimes I would have two sparring target because I purchased it from the marketplace and I got the free one. So now that we did that, we can get our lead or deed. And we can have up to four lair in this universe online, but you have to purchase a deer for, for a deed for each layer. So we get one deed for free. For the other three layer, we have to purchase the deed from the marketplace. So let's consume the deed. So once you consume the deed, then we can select which layer we want to use. And we can select if we want to use it in Metropolis or in Gotham City. And in this case, I think we'll go to Metropolis. So let's go quickly through all the layers. So you have the ancient layer, the sewer layer, the eastern layer, the gothic layer, the bunker, the deco layer, the cave layer, the penthouse, the industrial, brainiac, atlantean. Oh, and there's also the volcano, volcano layer, but obviously I cannot purchase it from the marketplace. You have to play a mission from the, uh, the Birds of Prey DLC to be able to get the volcano layer. So in this case, we are going to use the penthouse for our friend uh, Deathstroke. And let's see where in Metropolis can we set it up. I would set it up at the Lake Score Tower, but uh, sadly we do not have the source marks to or even the cash to be able to do that. So no choice, we'll have to go elsewhere. 
Uh, let us set our lair to 1113 Adams Boulevard. It cost us 525 cash, so let us do that. So curate your base and cons consume the deed. The answer is yes. Congratulations. You are now a bona fide bad guy with a base. Head there now, and we can take a little tour. So let's go to our lair. So in this video, we will set up our lair. So we'll go through every steps to be able to set up our lair properly. So let's go in there. This is your mainframe, the nerve center of your lair. You can use it to gain access to powerful tools like orbital strikes, henchmen, and powerful equipment mods. Your mainframe's power is maintained here as well, so be sure to keep it up so you can access the more powerful features. This is your dispenser, where you'll pick up the items that you've chosen in the mainframe, such as communicators for your henchmen and orbital strikes. Finally, this is your base's control panel. It's used to enter decoration mode, alter some of the colors of your base, and for other diabolical purposes. So let us explore a layer a bit. So as you saw, the dispenser is right here. So whenever we're going to get stuff from our, from our mainframe, when we're going to unlock stuff on our mainframe, this is where we're going to get uh, that stuff. Uh, things like a uh, backup henchman. And here you can see the dive hideout. So let's pick it up. It's going to give us one more option whenever we want to set up our lair. The dive is the very small lair that the free-to-play players have. If you are a premium player, you will get a lair pretty much the size of the penthouse. But again, in the case of the penthouse, you have to purchase it from the marketplace. So you can see the mainframe over here. From the mainframe, you have access to the mainframe. So the accomplice, henchman, orbital strike, supply drop, and tactical mods. You have access to the generator. And also you could give the permission to people to enter your lair if you want to. And there is the generator downstairs also, but you you have a few more options. Like you do have access to the the generator, the generator in order to be able to recharge the cells uh, on the mainframe. But there's also the armory builds that we'll take a look at in just a minute. And also there's mods that you can add. Uh, there's the teleporter mods here. And there's the health and power mods, support mods and offense mods. And there's affinity mods that you can get if you get some elite gear eventually. So let's go to our journal and let's complete the home sweet home mission. So it's going to give us uh, our first uh, three items to put in our lair. So we go to our inventory. So the mission gave us uh, basically a decorative hanging lamp. It gave us an old layer granite uh, coffee table. And it gave us a classic dinner clock. Now that you've added the base items to your base inventory, use the control panel to enter decorator mode. So we have to go, the control panel is used for a few things. While in decorator mode, you can place your items at the appropriate markers. While most base items are just for show, there are amenities you can acquire that have very specific functions like bank, mail, and broker access. However, amenities can only be placed at specific markers. Once you have filled up enough markers, you will unlock free placement mode and be able to place base items almost anywhere. That's the gist of it. I'm sure you'll figure out even more tricks to your base. Have fun decorating. Remember, make it evil. And don't forget to try placing those items. So we can go to decoration mode to decorate our base. We can go to relocate base. If we want to change the style of our base, we have to go to relocate base. Or if we want to put our base in a, in a different place. Like if we wanted to put our base in Gotham instead of a Metropolis, that's what we would use. Rename base. Uh, let's give a name to our base. Let's call it, uh, usually we'll call it M for Metropolis. And here D, let's go for D stroke. So let's click OK. So we've changed the name of our base to embed D stroke. So let's go and uh, pick up base item. Let's say we had decorated our base and we want to redecorate it. It would pick up every item in our base. So here we're going to go to decoration mode. So once you're in decoration mode, you see all those blue circles on the ground or on the walls on, our, on the ceiling. That's where you can put your items at first. Uh, you can see there's these things called the markers to unlock free place and modes, zero out of 20. So once we put, once you put 20 items on your, on your, uh, in your lair, you don't have to use the circles anymore. But if you move your base, if you decide to move your base to another location or to change your base, every item that is not in a circle will disappear and you're going to have to put them back. So if you want items to remain where they are forever, even if you change your base, uh, you have to put them in the circles. 
So we've put the, uh, the clock here. Let's put the table here. And let's put the lamp here. There we go. And also we could set up our amenities. Like you can see here, the, the purple circles are where you can set up your amenities. Uh, there's only 10 uh, purple circle in your lair. So sadly, the, the places where you can put your amenities is very limited. Like you have two up here, and the last are downstairs. So you have one up, one here, one here, one here, and one here. Normally, you only have nine amenities, unless you have some amenities twice, like I do, with uh, some of my characters. So in this case here, we need to put the teleporter here. I usually I put the mailbox here at the entrance gives me easy access to the mailbox I uh, usually I put my bank here the bank is something I, I often need to have access to so I try to leave it uh, where it's fairly convenient to have access to it the same with the sort of vendor you don't have to do this you can put them anywhere you like in the purple but you, you're limited to the purple circles normally if I have two mailbox I would put a second mailbox here so that I can have a mailbox close to my broker I uh, sadly not really an option right now so we'll put we'll just put the broker here and usually in the in the basement I'll put my respect station here I'll put my R&D station here, the R&D vendor here, again so that it's convenient and it's close enough to the R&D station, and here I'll put my sparring target. And you can see here the sparring target is just a, just a normal dude. Uh, so there we go. So we've placed our amenities and uh, our few base items that we had. So let's go back to our journal. So I love the lamp. Let's conclude that. Let's go back to our journal. All right. So now we're going to get our first free armory. Uh, sadly, you get only free, one free armory per character. If you want to have more armories, you are going to have to purchase them from the marketplace. I'll show them to you in just a minute. So let us put our first armory. So you have to consume it, obviously. And then we have to go back to decoration mode. And again, early on, we have to put the armory where there's the, the blue circles like here. If we try here, it won't work. You have to put it here. It's uh, there, You have no choice at this point. Until we unlock free placement mode, that's how it's going to be. So there's our armory. If you want to have more armories, you have to go to the marketplace and you have to purchase them. And sadly, you have to purchase every single armory that you have that you want to have. Each armory that you purchase is only for one character. It's sad, but that's how it is. I forget where it is. So one armory is 400 marketplace cash. Although right now we have 20% off if you're a member, so it's probably uh, 500 marketplace cash. If you are not a subscriber, if you are a subscriber, normally you get 10% off. And uh, there's also an Armory 4 pack. There used to be an Armory 8 pack, but sadly, uh, those are gone by now. It, by now, it's only one Armory or four Armories. Not sure why they did that, but oh well. If you're a guy like me who purchased a lot of Armories, uh, you probably uh, we wept a bit when they removed the, the 8 pack. And here you have all the amenities that can, you can purchase. You could either purchase each amenity separately if you like. Or there are, or there used to be packs. There used to be amenity packs that you could purchase, where you would purchase like a, I think it was packs. They were packed by three armories, three amenities in each pack. And sadly, that seems to be a thing of the past. And if you want to have additional base, you have to purchase additional deed. So you have to purchase a deed for each new base that you want. So in the end, you can only purchase three deeds because you are limited to four bases per character. So once you once you purchase three deeds, uh, you have your four bases, and that that's uh, the maximum amount you can have. And uh, eons ago, you could only have four armories per layer, uh, but eventually they changed that so that you can have up to sixteen armories, and you can have all your sixteen armories in the one layer if you want to. Uh, let's go pick up our mail. So now you can see I have my mailbox, so no need to go anywhere. I can get I can just get the the box here. 
Uh, here we have our friend uh, Batman Beyond uh, One, who decided to give us a few so a few colas. Ah, uh, he's so nice. So now that we've placed our armory, so now that we've placed the armory, you have to go downstairs to basically just click on your generator to show that you understand what needs to be done next. So you go to do your generator. Basically, once we have, once we were going to get multiple armories, oh, we have to imprint the armory first. Almost forgot. So once you do have your armory, you have to imprint it. So let's do that. Uh, before let's do, let's check if I have uh, skill points. Nope. So at this point, there's nothing else we can do but imprint the armory. So let's do that. So the, we have the imprint menu. We could decide to imprint only the appearance, the traits and loadout, the equipment or the title. Uh, it's as we wish. And the same with activating it. We could activate everything or just activate the appearance and that kind of stuff. We can rename the armory. Oh, I got a bit of lag. Let's close it and start again. Sometimes people will see me close and reopen menus and they'll, they'll wonder why. Often that, that's why. Sometimes the menu freezes. The easy fix is you just leave the menu and come back. It's sad, but it happens. So here we're going to name it quite simply DPS. Usually what I do, I, if I have a DPS armory, I'll call it that. Sometimes I'll have a, if I have multiple DPS build, I'll call it DPS 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, in this case, I would probably create a, a controller armory. And we can select uh, also a little symbol. It doesn't really matter at first, but uh, once, you have, uh, once you have a lot of armories, or even worse, if you have a lot of characters with a lot of armories, uh, symbols become a bit important. So here I've used uh, this little symbol for DPS. So here I have my DPS symbol. So now if I go back to my generator, which uh, I tried to go to early, if I go to the generator, you can see here I have my equipped build. So here we can have up to 16 different builds, one build for each armory. So right now I only have one armory, so that's why I have only one build. But if I had other armories, then I could have other build. And then I could move the build around, depending on what I prefer. Now let's put it back upstairs. So what does that mean is that if I had multiple armories, I could change armory using uh, the D-pad. Of course, in this case, I just have the one armory, so I can't really change anything. If I made some changes, uh, let's uh, try something. Ideally, you want to have two armories to be able to switch from one armory to the next. If, let's say, I had made a whole bunch of my uh, changes to my character and I don't like those changes, then I could just go back to what my armory is set with. So often people will see me use uh, armories and uh, they'll see like that little animation thingy. Ah, uh, come on. They'll see that little animation thingy and they'll wonder, uh, what is that? It's just me using an armory. And you can see under the name, uh, you can see it. There's a little timer for the armory. So you cannot just uh, spam using armories. You can use it once. Then you see the little timer appear. And then you have to, use, to wait for the timer to cool down before you can use it again. And when, when you are, like right now, outside of combat, the timer goes fairly quick. But when you do, when you change armories in combat, then they, I think it takes 10 minutes for the cooldown to expire. So sadly in combat, you can only change armory really once, unless it's a really long combat that lasts a long time. So let's go back to our journal. Okay, so lock and load. So basically we had to check our inventory, place our armory, use the generator, which we did. So we're ready to go to the next step. No, I guess that's it. We'll wait a bit because there's been, uh, sadly, there's quite a bit of lag right now. You don't notice it because uh, I'll probably use the power of editing to, whenever I try to go to some menus, there's a, it takes a, a long time sometimes for the menu to appear. Let's go to the style. Yeah, so sadly, when I try to go to menus, it takes a while for the menus to appear. So thanks to the power of editing, you guys will notice that. But uh, there, there is quite a bit of lag today. But I guess, I guess we're done with the with setting up our base. So again, for the amenities, you have to purchase them from the marketplace. For the teleporter, you have no choice. The, the teleporter, you can only purchase it from the marketplace. But with the uh, with the, the mailbox, with the bank, with the sorter vendor, with the broker. I have a video with each of those amenities and I explain how you can get them for free 
by gathering a whole bunch of collections. And normally we should have access to the vault. So before we go, well, let's play the vault because well, we can. So early on, uh, you get uh, just a few things from the vault. Welcome, welcome, one and all, to Joker's Room of Fun, Mayhem and Prizes. What will it be? Something to flatten your opponents? Or just some useless crap? Who knows? You pay your money and you take your chances. Break the presents and get your prizes. So here there's a little thing explaining about feet. Uh, let's click on show me. So basically they just show you the page with all the feats. This is uh, the feat that the character has right now. And you can also see the feat, the, all the solo feat, the R&D feat, or all the feat for uh, every episode. I probably should make a 2020 video about feats. But personally I don't, don't care about them very much, so... That should do it for the vault. So as you can see, it gave us a whole bunch of, uh, of cash, and should give it should give us also a few styles. So let's take a quick look. That's it. Game's over. Step along. Step along. Nothing to see. Get going before my good mood wears off. That means now. So it gave us a back style, a pair of boots, and that's pretty much it. Oh, it gave us the Kryptonian bouncy sphere. I'll show it to you in just a minute. It gave us some Anf Metal that's going to be useful once we start uh, getting artifacts and upgrading those artifacts. So let's get out of here. So let us show you the Kryptonian Sphere because uh, why not? So basically it's a big ball with a Superman emblem uh, on it that you can uh, throw to, uh, to enemies. You can throw it for fun. Once in a while you see people in the Watchtower, the Hall of Doom, who will just uh, have those items and uh, throw them at each other for fun. It happens. So again, often some of you guys will ask, how can you customize your lair or how can you change your lair appearance? If we go to relocate base, yeah, sadly we cannot. Oh yeah, we can. Okay. Uh, normally you can change your base location only once every 24 hours, I think. So here we could go here and we could change the style of our lair. And we could change which city our lair is into. And depending on the, st on the style, the locations are different. So again, you have to purchase most of them. Uh, the ones you get at, at, uh, at first. The ones you get at first are the Gothic layer and the Deco layer. These are the two layers that you get for free. And as you saw, once you get your little uh, dispenser, you can get the dive layer from that uh, dispenser over here once you set up your layer. So again, what to to decorate your layer? Like right now, we're at 13 out of 20 items. So if I was to put like seven more items, then I could unlock free placement mode. We're not going to be able to do that today, but yeah, you guys have seen me use uh, decorate bases uh, in the past, so you probably saw me do it before. So that is going to be pretty much it for how to set up your lair in this universe online with our friend Deathstroke the Terminator. If you have any questions, feel free to ask so in the comment section down below and I'll see what I can do about answering your questions. Uh, again, I have roughly 2,000 videos about this universe online at this point. So if, if you search in my videos, odds are I already made a video that answered your question. So as always guys, thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.